So how's life treating you, Mr. Freet? Oh, not too bad. Other than well, I, I hate the postal system. Yeah, I understand that. The, they lost the tax return I filed for the foundation last November. Oh, no. I filed it again. They get sent a letter, said we didn't get it. I said it in September. And it gets as far as Salt Lake City, then disappears before it gets to Ogden, Utah. Wow. Same as the one last year. And I complained to them, and they sent me this letter. Uh, you know, oh, we got blah, blah, blah. Just double talk and bullshit. Blame me now on COVID. Right. I said, what did that have to do with last November? Right. I think the Postal Service is trying to do as poor a job as it can to get more money thrown their way. Good possibility. So now I'm working on the current year's tax return, getting ready to file it. <laughs> Waiting for the post office. You know what? There's, oh. I can send it to a different address in Kentucky if I want to use FedEx. Right. Well, we'll pay for that. Of course, next year I'm going to be required to file electronically, and I have no idea what that's going to cost. Uh, shouldn't shouldn't cost anything, but hang on one second. I'll be right back. Oh, so I realized it's how bad I needed water. Uh, hi, Oni. And now I can say hello. There you go. So the biggest question in the air right now, will it be too hot for us to go out and pick up litter on Saturday? Yeah, I don't think it's going to be. I mean, it feels pretty comfortable right now. This well, is supposed to be the hottest day of the 90s. week. But I think Saturday is like 86 or 87. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's our hero, Ron Smith. I thought you yeah. went to Washington. Left the cape in the closet. Yeah. Not the hero we need, but the hero we want. There you go. <laughs> You're looking awfully relaxed there, Mr. President. Uh, you know, it's a good front. I'm, I'm, I'm a good, good actor. Something about recreational drugs. No, sadly, <laughs> sadly, that is not what, what keeps me relaxed. Well, it might be time to move to Baja. Why is that? About two days ago, or maybe it was yesterday morning, I read an article about how their Mexican Supreme Court, National Supreme Court, is requiring their legislature within the next two weeks to finally codify their national legalized recreational marijuana laws. Entire that would be country. nice. The cartels will love that. Well, that's the, part the of funny the thing why is it's taken so long to write the laws. I mean, the research shows actually the cartels are hurt by legalization, but but they're the only one in Mexico that has guns. <laughs> Hi, Christine. Hi, Alex. <laughs> Hi, Andy. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Awesome. My microphone is working this time. Yay. Oh, I realized one more thing I need there. Here comes Colleen. Let's see. Let's use the tree trunk for the meeting later today. All right, so it looks like we have to help out Ioni here. We have Mike Freet, Ron Smith, Ioni, Alex, Christine, Colleen. Roy is here, but he's not here. Jan just joined, so we have one. Two. Oh, here comes Bill Smith, yay. So that gives one, two, three, four, five. Oh, stop moving. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of us. That would be a quorum, would it not? Yes. No, we got the kangaroo too. Kangaroo. Oh, behind you. Yes. Uh, see, this is why I need recreational drugs. You see the kangaroo. You say there's the kangaroo, and I'm not where. Yay. Oh, and there's a snake. Colleen's got a snake. 
Jen, you're looking very fine today and relaxed. Thank you. Bill, you're looking like Jan today. <laughs> <laughs> Bill's like, yeah, I wish that funny, uh, but okay. All right. So being 1101 and we do have a quorum, shall we begin the, be uh, the hang on one sec here. See what this is. This is Andy. Okay. Here come. Yeah, no worries. So meeting ID is 860-5884-0856. Okay. 0856. And then the passcode is 418715. 18715. Yes. All right, no worries. All right, so where, where were we? Larry's trying to join. Come on, let's. Uh... All right, so we're gonna begin the meeting. I might as well just look over here at this since it's not showing me what I wanna see. Uh, we have four meeting minutes. The first one is from September 8th. Is there a, a motion to accept the minutes for September 8th? I move. Second? I'll second. Any, uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. We have meeting minutes from September 15th, which was a... Uh, I believe a, a core meeting. Any uh, any comments? I think we Jake? should move to approve those. There Can we I go. Do? There's there's a motion. A second. A second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Any opposed? All right, that passes September 22nd. Shall we just call for a vote? It's a motion. Sure. Second. I'll second. Okay, Alex seconds. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Any, any opposed? Okay, that passes. By the way, Larry, we're just going over uh, meeting minutes. Today's no meeting. All right. Um, I'm, I'm here anyway. Yes. How are you doing? Wonderful. Good. Any uh, removal of items or changes to today's agenda? Hearing none, we'll move forward. Well, there was one item that was left off the agenda. Okay. To approve the community service detail budget allocation. All right. We will do that. Um, Somewhere in here. Business. That's actually on the second page down toward the bottom, but that's okay. Okay. New business. Perfect. There it is. New business. I see it. All right. Um, I have nothing to report specifically that I can think of. Um, is everyone getting the uh, the center view at this point? Yes. Yes. Actually, maybe I should have said, is anybody not getting center view? Okay. Chirito just joined us. She'll be happy to hear that. She's doing a great, great job. Von North is not present. Uh, Roy Henderson, if when he, he has another meeting, uh, we'll come back to him. Jan Jones. Yes, sir. I have two things on the agenda. First of all, our usual way of doing past president's meetings is a little difficult this year with COVID and with Zoom meetings. So um, Andy and I have talked about it, and basically, the twenty is it the twentieth? Um, is that the Next date of meeting. our meeting? I believe it is. Where Keith yes. is going to Keith is going to be presenting, and Keith, of course, is a past president, so it works out well. I'm just planning to, um, with Andy's help, kind of honor the most recent past presidents. Just a quick 
show of their picture and say a little blurb about each of them and thanking them for their service to the club. Um, so that's the plan for this year's past presidents meeting. And I will so Jan, the 20th you're talking about is October 20? Next, oh, yeah. next yeah. week. Right. Okay, thank you. Right. Yes, thank you, next week. So basically, yeah, basically the plan is we're not gonna have any general business during the meeting un unless there's something that ha absolutely has to be done. It'll basically be our, you know, after, after the uh, welcome, then we'll just go right into past presidents and then we'll go into Keith. How does that sound? Uh, wonderful. Okay. Perfect. So Jen, um, we'll have to chat, not today, but we'll have to okay. chat this week and work on let that. Me, let me know what works for you and we'll, we'll connect. Okay. okay. All Perfect. right. Um, the next thing I wanted to mention, I know it's not quite time yet, but in December, we'll be voting on the new slate. And I wanted to just do a check-in and make sure that everybody who is currently serving as a director um, plans to continue, because if you don't plan to continue, then I need to be working on um, recruiting in concert with Vaughn. There will be, I have already um, determined a uh, vice president for the next slate. And so there will be a vacancy on the board um, and we'll work together, the current person who's in that role and myself and I, and I imagine we can uh, recruit Vaughn to help us as well in recruiting someone for that particular directorship. So Jan, are you open to using money bribes? Uh, <laughs> money bribes. Always money bribe. Okay. Call me. <laughs> okay. I think Jan, you just volunteered. Did you you, Jan, did you say you have a name? Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I want to tell you that actually there were three people interested who, who indicated interest, which is quite Hallelujah. unusual yeah. for our club. Usually it takes a while to recruit somebody into the vice president role. But I had three very enthusiastic people. I interviewed all three. I don't know if interview is the right term, but I talked to all three. And, um, and I think we've got some opportunity for succession planning beyond what we've had in the past. So I'm really excited and I'll share that. Vaughn, I'll share that with you. Um, so when you, I'll share it with Andy Andy and I have already talked about it, and he'll be in the role of recruiting for the slate next year. Um, and then we'll, we'll be good to go for future years. So it's very nice to know that there are people who actually are interested in making that commitment. It's also kind of disturbing to realize how many sadists we have, or masochists we have. <laughs> but, um... no. I don't think so. I think we're I very, think very so. blessed. Very blessed. Yes, we are. Yeah. All right. Let's go back real quick, Vaughn. Now that you're here, you have, or no, I'm sorry. Do you have anything um, to report? Uh, I don't have any report. All right. Um, monthly member report. We are looking at uh, having 52.29% or fifty-two point two nine percent attendance, which is really good considering everything. It'd be great if it was better. And uh, thank you to the uh, reach out and don't touch anyone crew. Uh, I expect we'll be seeing more and more people coming up. Um, I did notice Mike real quick. Well, actually, I guess that'll come under yours. So, all right. Um, approve proposed new members. Uh, we don't have any new members to approve quite yet. That's correct. We have had a guest two weeks in a row who was interested. Oh, Lynn, I sent her the member information form or the proposal form since I've become the default sponsor. She hasn't returned it. Okay. I told her that, uh, you know, I needed it for the board meeting, but I didn't get it yet. Okay. Maybe she'll, I doubt she'll get it to me before we have our board meeting at noon. 
Okay. So I told her we were going to plan an outdoor event. It would be nice for her to come and get to meet us. Absolutely. And we've had another visitor, uh, Christy Knight. Yes, uh, I've noticed that. And I, I keep meeting three times. Talk. Um, if she can't join any, if she can't watch us anymore unless she joins. So she didn't renew? No. She did not. I, I am going to reach out to her. I know that leading up to the election, I don't think she's going to make any decision. But just to let her know, we've noticed and, and we, we uh, are glad to see her face. I don't know if that's wow. a good idea, Andy. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good move. And I have another one, Aisha Williams. She's uh, been approved by the board. She gave me the, got the uh, paperwork in her a long time ago. But she really would like to be able to go to a live event and get to meet us before she commits. I have another one that's waiting on that same thing. He, he just uh, is not excited about Zoom meetings. But his Didn't you tell him what a sparkling personality I have? I make I it feel like it's live. I'm I'm losing my sales ability. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, dues payment update, Ron. You want to cover this one? Well, it's the same folks that we're uh, being patient with. Yeah. And honestly, you know, we've even had Keith and Charito drive out to Charlotte's place expecting like, you know, semi-appointment to hand her her roster and it got messed up even then. So I'm inclined to be patient and kind <coughs> rather than pull triggers on ending things, especially yeah. this year. Uh, yeah. The worst that can happen is we end up paying district and, and international dues for some folks uh, that haven't paid us yet. But I mean, we're not talking about anything other than stellar upstanding citizens and longtime members. I, I'm just really reluctant to do anything to end our relationship with them because uh, I completely don't understand what the deal is with not paying the dues. Yeah. So anyway, that unless the board directs me to do something else, I'm going to be really soft on this and, until we can figure it out. And I'm not even sure when we get to January 1 if the right thing to do is to pull the plug on them, at least not this year. We got plenty of money. Uh, yeah. you know, the, and, and uh, it's not going to hurt us if we try to take care of them. Yeah. Anyway. Ron, I know you've posted those names before. Uh, who, who are they again? I'd like to maybe work with you and follow. Okay. Ed Gallo, Randy Hall, Charlotte Hotchkiss, uh, Dr. Plotner, I can't remember his first name off the top of my head, George Weir, and Trent White. Yeah, I'm going to pull the plug on Hall. He just he hadn't been a member for very long. And when when the economy tank COVID came on and his project was no longer close to viable, he just disappeared. He didn't even say thank you very much or kiss my rosy red finger. <laughs> I mean, it just so I'm going to pull him out. Uh, but the others I'm going to keep. I, I would, well. The only other one that I was concerned about was George Weir, because I, I just I, I had a. Uh, I can't remember exactly when or what the specific conversation was, but he just, it, he felt a little like he was, I mean, he didn't attend regular meetings that often. And, um, but well, I, I mean, I don't yeah, think we have to pull the plug on anybody. Yeah, but, but just, he, I, he did, he did tell me about a month ago that he would pay it. Oh, okay. And, um, there you go. Why, why it didn't happen right away, I'm not really sure, because normally George is a pretty crisp with his business. Um, but, you know, yeah, we'll see. It's yeah, if, if, as long as they're responding to us, I, I mean, me personally, <laughs> and I'm not speaking for the entire board, but I agree with Colleen that accommodation is important. As long as, you know, they're talking to us and, and they haven't disappeared to, say, Idaho. Yeah. Oh, I talked uh, to Trent and he said he was just too busy. Yeah. That's good. He doesn't plan to quit, but he's just been too busy. To well, pay. yeah, I mean, I was standing next to him at Haven House cooking food, and he was talking about being gung-ho for Rotary, and, and I didn't want to bust his chops in front of all the other people, but, you know. That's funny, because I've got positions in mind for all four of those in next year's. Yeah, there you go. Cadre. Good. So the, before, the, we the people. Plug, before we pull the plug, let me talk to them. And you own multiple hats? Go get them, Vaughn. Yeah. Well, you know, I gotta, I've got to get organized at some point for next year. Otherwise, <laughs> Andy, Andy's going to make me look really bad. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Heck no. Um, You're all right. born organized, Vaughn. 
<laughs> Let's move on to the treasurer's report. Well, I think whoops. Ron already said we have plenty of money. I, I guess that's the that's uh that's the treasurer's report. We do I do owe you a uh, I gotta work with Dan and get your budget for the year where we assumed we were just gonna do next year's budget over again, but we don't even have that listed. But we have the money in and very little in expenses, so we're rolling fine. Okay. On that. Yeah, we have a whole pot of facility fee money that we collected that we're not paying to any yeah. facility, and that that's a pretty good float. Yep. Whatever we don't use, I'll be very happy to apply it next year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> tread lightly Taiwan. there, Bob. <laughs> Taiwan, right? Oh, gosh. All right. So uh, any? Uh, there were no items removed from the consent calendar. Hang on. We need a motion to approve the member and oh. the treasurer's report. Yes. OK. Please, somebody. Um, Motion for to approve the treasurer's report. Approve the Vaughn. Thank you. Second. Second. All right, Mike Fried seconds. All in favor of approving the treasurer's report. Aye or or aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Excellent. That passes. Am I missing any other things we have to approve? Okay. Staff reports, executive secretary. Yes, sir. Well, actually, I, I, I have really good news. Um, I'm sitting on zero requests for refunds with a couple of days to go for the deadline. It doesn't really surprise me, but it just validates what we all hoped would happen. And several uh, notes back on the email saying, don't worry about me. You know, we're happy to support you guys. Uh, take the money and do your good work with it. And so that felt really, really good. Um, so uh, as I've gotten uh, responses back, I've sent out tax receipts to those people and then uh, yeah, take that money and run. Um, and uh, as soon as we get to the deadline, then, you know, we will, you know, then, then we conclude that it's our money and that they'll get their tax receipt and uh, we'll get closure on that aspect of it. Beautiful. Um, that's a yippee. Ioni, do you have anything? No, no report. Why not? <clears throat> I don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Good oh. reason. <laughs> uh, Bill Smith, any any report beside the the treasurer's report? Nope. I'm sorry. No. Um, there we go. Okay. Uh, no club service. Uh, Chirito, thank you. Amazing job with the with the uh, center view. Um, do you have anything else to report? Um, I think I just want to. Uh, I think you all know that the roster are are all mailed out. And hopefully whoever is picking up uh, anything from our PO box address, I hope there's no return. But all of those um, rosters have a return address. So hopefully there is no return and I've um, mailed everything. Also just a quick uh, thank you to Ioni for putting together the minutes of meeting. Uh, this is, that is really, really uh, so much work but uh, I really appreciate that I can read them from, from top to bottom. Thank you, Trina. Yeah, and also much. just quickly about uh, those people that we have contacted, uh, especially Jill, I sent her a screenshot of step-by-step -step guide how to do Zoom and was very, very glad that she attempted to do it and we saw her last week. Yes. And I yes. thought, yeah, I, I am glad. I hope we get more people to attend the meeting. It's not about the Zoom meeting. It's about uh, supporting you, Andy, and our club the to club. be there for our club. Yeah, Thank the you. club. Absolutely. Yes. So, Chirito, as a follow-up to your comment about the mailbox, I have the post office box key. I make weekly trips, and just yesterday, I got one return on the roster, which was from Delisle Collab. 
Oh, okay. Oh, gosh. Might have the wrong address. Yes. Okay. Anyway, I'll give it to Keith in the morning. Thank you, Ron. You're welcome. All right, Miss Keegan. Community yes. service. Hi. Um, so I'm going to just uh, go really quick uh, through the numbers. Um, I was given $46,000 budget this year. And so um, here's how we decided to allocate it. $30,000 went to grants. Uh, fortunately, we did not have to reject any of our local organizations. All of them who applied got grants, which is kind of cool. Then um, we allocated $1,000 for Christmas toys, $1,000 for district matching grant, $1,000 for Little Free Libraries project that we're going to do uh, this year. Uh, it's in progress. And we also allocated $3,000 for the Heaven House. And we left ten k for the contingency reserve. So uh, 10000 is probably more than it usually been allocated for that thing. However, um, taking the COVID in consideration and sort of kind of unknown future, financial future for, for the whole club. So we decided to set aside a little bit more money as a, as a competitor reserve this year than uh, previous years. And is that the is case that not as yeah. many is do we not have as many requests as normal for grants? Well, I am on the committee first year, so that's hard for me to say. Um, it looks like it was a little a fewer this year than in comparison to the list that uh, Joe Jamanka gave me from the previous years, that was less requests. And um, there's a reason probably for that because um, a lot of organizations just um, just wait through the COVID. Yep. They can they cannot operate, so they just wait through it. So, and some some of them continue. Like for example, Alzheimer's San Diego. These people cannot hold. They have to keep up their business and their services. You know, because Alzheimer's people can't just fall asleep for 18 months, you know? You yeah. need to provide services for them. So the Salvation Army and um, the Elizabeth Hospice, these organizations uh, probably have even more expenses because of the COVID, so. Yeah, Salvation yeah. Army is feeding a lot more people. Yeah. And the, yeah, and I'm pretty sure the Elizabeth Hospice has a lot more people to take care um, whose, whose relatives died from COVID as well. So yeah. We try to consider all those factors um, assigning the numbers to this. So, and that's there. And um, thank you so much, Mike Freak. He put together all of that on a paper and one sheet so that you guys can see all of it. That's what I get um, paid for. <laughs> <that's> right. <laughs> okay. Your the one, the one uh, grant that I I was surprised did not submit was the uh, the YMCA and I, I mean I know Lisa has been she's not sure what's happening with YMCA and they've been somewhat furloughed so that well, I'm, I'm pretty sure Andy it what happens the same like with my nonprofit here in San Diego East County like I have my own nonprofit East County is Symphony like a little orchestra for kids um, so we are not allowed to oh. get kids together so we right. just had to wait for it. So we're not allowed to, to uh, do groups more than 14 kids at the same time. So yeah, I, I think y, YMCA has the same restrictions. Yeah. Right. And at that time, maybe we'll have to revisit the, uh, the contingency fund, but we can worry about that another time. That's correct, yeah. All right, Colleen. Well, thank you for getting that done, Alex. No, oh, yes, very much. And we'll we'll vote on that here shortly. But yes, okay. uh, outstanding work, especially. Okay. And Andy, year. if I may, I uh, told Chuck Ayling I'd ask a question for him regarding the okay. foundation budget. Uh, okay. And it's probably more to you, Mike, than anybody. 
Uh, and also I wanted to thank Alex for the work on the, the, the community service grants. That's a big, big job and it looks really good. So well done lady. Um, anyway, Chuck's question had to do with the Boy Scout budget. He was happy to see it in uh, you know the youth service, I believe it is. He wanted to know if he still had access to the money from last year's budget that did not get used for scouts. Technically, no, but um, I think that it's something we're going to have to deal with. Um, we have a pretty big budget this year, like community service. And it, the reason there's so much in uh, contingency is a lot of people just didn't request, whether they weren't working because of COVID or they forgot. Um, yeah. Okay. I don't know well, if there's where it's written that we can't carry it over, but I think we should, especially this year, call it an extraordinary year, because we may not, with our fundraiser um, for the next year, duplicate what we did with CORE. So I yeah. try to keep our powder dry and, and approve letting that money roll over. Okay. So maybe the answer for Chuck is maybe, depending on a specific proposal, that would have to be approved. Well, for Chuck, you might be able to tap, uh, we got a couple of contingency funds even though it's okay. not specifically budgeted for scouting, okay. we can find some money for them. Okay, thank you. So, but I think, and again, I think you're right, Ron. We need some sort of proposal from him to- Yeah, to, it's not a blank check. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right, now Colleen. Yay. Uh, so one of the reasons I'm like, let's accommodate people is because I, I need some accommodation. <laughs> um, so, uh, the, I wanted to start with talking about the Polio Plus question that came up in the minutes. Um, the Last year, we didn't spend a dime of Rotary Foundation money on Polio Plus. All the money that we, we had a very successful fundraising year for Polio Plus. Um, so this year, and then this year, I was when I was submitted the budget, I was thinking that Rotary International may um, come up with a COVID project that they might want to um, you know, do as a group internationally. I haven't seen any evidence that something like that is coming yes. around. Yes, actually there is. Oh. It was in last week's program and it'll be in this week's program too. Okay. But let me, let me pull this up and um, it's the, uh, the polio, the, the walk. Let me, let me pull this up and, and display it for you. Thank you. Um, Let's see. Ding, ding, ding. Let me stop share for a second and then share. Really big. <laughs> yeah, so th there was there's the virtual polio oh. wall. Yes. Okay. Um, I will pull the um, I'll pull the marketing materials. Okay. You've already had lunch. Yeah. And see what I can do about um, raising awareness. Okay. Uh, and, and actually, I just realized this is not international. This is the Pacific Beach okay. Rotor Act. Okay. Um, so, so, yeah, so I was very slow when we looked to see who is ahead of her. Now I know J A N. Hi, G M. It's a slow. What? Um, I'm getting audio back. Here's what it is. Uh, uh, so anyway, um, Tuesday is when Vera goes back to school. I got her approved to be in the afternoon classes, so I will be available to continue my service um, and attend meetings and keep working on things. I have $2,000 in contingency funds that I thought we could discuss as a committee. Um, you know, how we're gonna, if we're gonna put into polio, if we wanna do another fundraising campaign, um, or if we wanna try and redirect it towards some international COVID measure. But I, like I said, I don't think I've seen anything of it that yet. Um, any questions? Yeah, well, the rules on that, uh, anything over 300 bucks has to be approved by the board. Right. To recharacterize. Yes. And I, and, and if we come up with it, once we have it, um, once we have a use for the contingency fund, I will bring it to you guys for approval. Great. Okay. Outstanding. Christine. Um, uh, uh, Christine Montan, International. She did it. There, you, Christine, you got to turn on your microphone. Sorry, I'm on um, the iPhone because my laptop was frozen. I had a quick question for Colleen. Did we apply for a district grant this year? No. All right. So that um, is just important to know that um, 
in the community service budget then where it was a match to the district funds that thousand dollars becomes available then okay the you. deadline was early early in the rotary year yeah, yeah. and i um i apologize for not getting into it sooner for those of you who don't know i've had health problems since like may but i'm on the men now and i should be back in fighting form very soon no worries no problem christine um, what was it Christina, what was the deadline? Do you remember? I don't. Um, it would be on the um, district website. But just recently, what happens is the clubs apply. The district committee makes a determination if it meets the qualifications. And then they send in to Rotary International um, a list of what they want to fund and match and then Rotary International approves it. And that's already been approved. It was in, I think, um, this week's newsletter that the district grants committee had already received approval from RI and those checks would be going out. So we'll, we'll work on it. Yeah, it'll be fine. For, for another time, but I'm just letting you, you know that we have that available for local needs. And then in terms of COVID-19, um, Rotary as an international organization is not coming up with a new campaign because they don't want to take away anything from polio eradication, which is continuing. But on the website, rotary.org, um, they've had a lot of information on Rotary response. And so they are sharing what local clubs and local districts are doing with food banks, um, with shelters, all those kinds of things. So Rotary is very involved in responding to the pandemic, but it's not going to be, you know, like a new campaign. Um, quick thought, real quick, just a, a left turn a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, for the district grant stuff, um, there was an application, Alex, that we talked about a little bit that was for, about international trafficking. Uh, here in San Diego, and I know when you and I discussed it because they weren't really focused in Escondido, you didn't think right. that fell under your purview. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe we can find a way to reroute that thousand dollars to international service for because human trafficking is a big thing for Rotary this year yeah. as one of their their focuses. So if um, Colleen, Christine, and and uh, Alex, if you could kind of work together and maybe see if we can find a way, even though we missed the, the district grant deadline, maybe we can find a way to still do some international project, even though it would be at a local sure. level. Hey, hey sure. Andrew, uh, don't want to interrupt this right okay. now, and I'm, uh, I've re re rejoined your group. So if Okay, we'll come back to you in just one minute, okay? Sounds good. Um, Mike, Freet, membership service? Wait. That wasn't oh. my report. Oh, that was I'm a sorry. question for Colleen's report. That's all right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, just very quickly, um, we're doing a program on Rotary Foundation and International Service um, on the second meeting in November. So Colleen and I will get will get together and get that going. Um, I have 11 members who are within uh, stone's throw distance of their next Paul Harris Fellows, and so I'll be in contact with them. Um, so that we have some Paul Harris fellows to give out on that day too. It's um, anyone that's interested, it's a good time to donate to the Rotary Foundation um, prior to the end of the tax year. So if you're interested, give me a call or a buzz and I'll let you know how we can match your contribution with uh, points. Beautiful. All right, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Mike Freet, anything on membership services? No, I just have a couple, you know, a couple of people pending, but they're kind of holding off until they get to see some of us live. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, uh, I will try and avoid. Any more requests come in, we can process them. It's yeah. just kind of a hard time to get things going. Yeah. And I'll try not to uh, scare them off when we do meet live. <laughs> uh, vocational service, Larry, anything to report? Uh, nothing new other than that we are on full support mode for this painting of the. Uh, column the concrete barriers on Grand Ave okay. so we donated through, through um, Escondido Shines we donated some money to the uh, Arts Association 
to pay for their supplies. And uh, the head of that, uh, named, a person named Suzanne Nicolaisen, is a is a ever ready bunny. She just it's hard to keep up with her. Actually, she's just going and going and going. So I expect we will have those barriers painted in the next month or so, the remaining ones, and there will be a, a, a predominant uh, rotary logo painted and an Escondido Shines logo painted on one of the end caps, so they'll know that we were contributed to making this happen. Nice. Outstanding. And uh, I'll be announcing that almost every week's meetings. Okay. Um, the other thing is uh, we, uh, we got a highway pickup plan for Saturday, and I'm watching the weather. It was really supposed to be hot, but the weather forecast keeps going down, so it looks like it may be pulled off or not. I'll, I'll let everyone know tomorrow who volunteered. So. Beautiful. But if you haven't volunteered already, send me an email so I know you're coming. Okay. Sounds good. Youth service is not attending. Um, I'm going to do these last two items, and then we'll come back to Roy. So any unfinished business? Okay, hearing none. The, the new business is to, to review and approve the community service allocations in the foundation budget. Uh, Alex just reported on that to us, and we talked a little bit about what the, these breakdowns were, and that we had the $10,000 contingency just because um, I move approval. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All right, and the people are arguing to do this one. Is there any discussion? <laughs> any discussion on this? Nope. So the overall foundation budget um, is here. Hearing no discussion, let's take a vote. All in favor of approving the ERF budget. Do we do we approve the ERF budget? Is this just a report? No, you're okay. it says to approve it. And and the community has to approve it. Okay. Then the foundation oh. board has to approve it. Okay, so we are approving to forward this to the foundation board for their Aye. approval. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, that passes. There we go. All right, Roy Henderson. Let's hear about the un annual fundraiser report. All right. Hello, everybody. Sorry I joined late. I had a business conference call that could not be rescheduled, but it's over. Uh, so what I've been doing, I wanted to try to, for this outdoor event we're planning on doing, I wanted to try to get some insight from the Rancho Bernardo Club and the Carlsbad Club on the Carlsbad Oktoberfest and the Rancho Bernardo event. So the Carlsbad president's woman named Ava Payne. I contacted her and she responded and I talked to her at length yesterday. The Rancho Bernardo Club president is a guy named Alex Robinson. I've written him an email and also got his phone number and left phone messages and he has not been responsive. This has been over a week. So um, on Rancho Bernardo, I'll probably I'm give him another phone call and then I'll maybe move down the food chain of the organization there and see if I can talk to somebody at Rancho Bernardo. But Carlsbad, yeah, they do the Oktoberfest and uh, they get about, it's a holiday park in Carlsbad. That's the park that's just kind of down the, you can see it from I-5, just down the big embankment off of, uh, just on the immediate east side of I-5. And they get 5,000 people coming to that event. And I ask her, uh, how they get so many people and she said well they just put signs all over the city they advertised in local newspapers they just do a classic local publicity sales and marketing campaign and of course they've done it for a number of years so there's this people that come every year and they've got it in their brain already that it's coming up um they charge 15 dollars uh for admission and uh, you get a german meal as part of that 15 dollars and so they get 5,000 people. Like I said, there's that $75,000 gate receipts there. They do ask each member to commit to 10 tickets, $150 worth of tickets. So, and those, each member can sell, resell those tickets to friends and neighbors on a street corner, whatever they want to do, or they can use all 10 tickets themselves. Uh, so that's still $150 that they ask for each member to pony up which is the same as our club does, except now it's 10 tickets, not just one ticket for the, as it is for the quarter cuisine. Yeah, but our ticket costs 10 times as much. Yes. 
and yes. And so, but still, if they get, uh, you know, and they have I ask how many members they 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 have two Carlsbad clubs and they combine the two clubs together into this Oktoberfest effort. Their club, the Carlsbad Club, the original Carlsbad Club, which is hers, has about sixty-five members, and the other club has a hundred called the High Noon Club. It has one hundred twenty-five members. That's one hundred ninety. Yeah, it's one hundred ninety people total, and so times ten. So that's nineteen hundred tickets there. So 1,900 versus 5,000 people that show up. So you got a big, you know, over 3,000 people that are just buying tickets that are not associated with those commitment of 10 tickets per member. So you do have a good community participation there. And uh, they do charge, of course, Oktoberfest, they have beer, but they, they do charge for the drinks, she believes. The only thing included with the admission is the German meal. I ask her if they have things for sale, you know, arts, art, artists, crafts, things like that for sale, and will they take any cut from that? And she says, no, they don't. So their revenue is from the tickets, and they do have sponsors, uh, same way as we do. I ask them how, if the sponsors are heavily concentrated among members, or whether they get outside sponsors that aren't part of the club. And she said, no, they have sponsors outside the club. So they have sponsors inside the club and outside the club. They said that uh, between the two clubs, they usually raise, they net about the $40,000 per club, net net on the event. Um, and that, 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 that's what she had to say about that, about that event. They are, um, she invited me, she's very nice. She invited me to one of their meetings. They're doing, uh, they're doing outdoor meetings. They're doing like Zoom meetings like we're doing and about half the time. And then they, she said they've got some member that has a huge driveway. I don't know if, you, if that driveway is a you know, private airstrip in front of his house or what, but he says he has a huge, <laughs> a huge driveway and they do, uh, you bring your own lawn chair and they uh, have a caterer come in and cater the meal at these, uh, at these driveway meetings. She invited me to come to one of those. Next one of those is in November. She said she'd let me know and I'll come to one of those and find out more. So that's, that's the story from Carlsbad. Rancho Bernardo, I know, um, Alex gave a kind of report another meeting or two ago about her uh, experience going to the going to the Rancho Bernardo event. Uh, but I wanted to talk to somebody in the Rancho Bernardo Club to get some of the financial background, uh, assuming the the uh, Rancho Bernardo Club is as forthcoming as the woman president of the Carlsbad Club was. So that's what I have to say today because I know I've got some emails from some people thinking there's outdoor events and I can't raise much money. And uh, you'd have to have you know, half of the city to show up to make any serious money. I've, I've, I've received some opinions in that from that direction. So that's one that I wanted to investigate these two clubs to see how really where their money comes from. Any uh, any comments or questions from people on that? When are you looking at the event happening? April. Are we looking at spring? It, yeah, spring, April or May. Okay. I want to make sure if it's going to be outdoor. I want to make sure it's late enough that the possibility of rain is remote and but still early enough that it's not too hot have you thought about a venue kit carson park grape day park yeah i want to do it in a in a in Esquito park either great i was thinking grape day park um kit carson's possible but i was thinking grape day park um and i'm going to we're going to get lots of community people to come we need it close by and convenient to to uh, to uh, travel to Need to find out if the city will allow uh, beer sales. Well, I knew that question was going to come up. <laughs> they, they have to on Cruising Grand once a year in Cruising Grand. Uh, they have a um, they have a um, wine and beer tasting deal at Cruising Grand. They fence off a section of the Maple Plaza, and you pay your money to go inside the fenced off area of Maple mm -hmm. Plaza, and that's city property. And so. Uh, this is the same idea, just uh, so it's a, it would just be bigger. So it's a difference of degree and not of kind between wine and tasting in Maple Plaza versus an event like this. All right. But didn't they Let's, have like a little barrier of some sort around that uh, wine tasting area? Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and let's go ahead. We're gonna wanna wrap this up real quick. Um, I, I will leave one last comment about the alcohol too. I do, I do remember um, I went to a Lyric Court show it at um, 
at uh, the center that was outside. And I mean, all the seating was out into Grape Day Park and they did have alcohol sales, but you had to stay in the center for the yeah. art where they were selling. Mm -hmm. So um, any other comments uh, on, on this? Any other feedback to, to Roy or? All right. Keep up the good work, Roy. Okay, sounds good. Have fun, Roy. All right, thanks. Have fun storming the castle. <laughs> Sorry, that was a bad throwback. Roy, uh, I right. just, Roy, I just chatted you the name of a gentleman from Rancho Bernardo Club who actually sold me tickets and who was advertising. You might want to contact him directly. Okay, you said you, Alec, you said you emailed that to me just now? I just chatted it to you. Chatted it, you mean as in? It? Text. Text message. Oh. Oh, okay. chat, chat on the. Uh... I don't think you hit send, Alex, because I don't see it in, unless you did it uh, privately. I, I did it privately, yeah. Oh, okay. Wrong. There you go. So that, that should come to my cell phone number, Alex? No, if you, there's a chat button at the bottom of your screen. So I'm going to be cut. Just send it to everyone. Right next to you should see. Yeah, uh, I got that. Okay, so. Yeah, if Bill you... Chafin. That's right. Okay, you got it. All right, there it is. Okay. Uh, the public chat. All right, so uh, do we have a motion to adjourn the board meeting? Hell yes. <laughs> All right, do we have a hell yes second? <laughs> sure. Yay, Alex seconds. Uh, all in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 All right, we will adjourn this and we'll reconvene in the other room. Dorito, I just sent you a message. I don't have the link for the noon meeting. So I've asked Chirito to send it again. Okay. Um, I will resend it to you too as well. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thanks right. a lot. Thank you guys. Well, thank you for all your hard work. You're doing great stuff. Resend to me too, Andy. It's okay. Dan. All right. Talk to you soon. Huh? Another invite for me too, please. Okay. <laughs> I will do that. All right. So Bye, everybody. So you're closing this room? I am. I am. As soon as I send this email out. I Bye, will. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Alex. Let's see. Who was I sending this to? Jan. Uh, who else? Christine. Was it Christine Montan? Um, Colleen. All right, there we go.